I stand here in all form of humility, knowing that I am speaking to the apple of God's eye, the one that is God's creation, that Jesus gave his life to you. The pulpit is a place and must always be the place of empowerment, the place where you address the issues of the day, the place where God, as it were, speaks through his manservant or his dreaming servant to bring forth, as I said before, empowerment, healing, understanding, and victory. This place is a no nonsense place. It's the place of the Lord, where God speaks and the people are expected to respond. The ancient of days, they would be standing upon a rock or a platform, and then the scribes would come out and they would speak the words in the book of Nehemiah, and the people would hear it, and the people would say, Amen to the movement, Amen to the word, Amen to the truth. Amen, because God is in control. Because in the ancient of days and times later, centuries later, millennials later, the word of God still remains. The voice of God, the voice of righteousness, the voice of action and order. We don't speak another gospel, but we speak the gospel. We don't speak messages, but we speak the message. The word, and it's the word of Almighty God. Clap your hands if you love Jesus. I am honored to have our men's president consider little old me. I was looking forward to hearing from our pastor just as you. Well, no, I can't wait to hear him very, very soon. It's what Ladies' Day, as it were, because it's Mother's Day, and it's also Men's Sunday. And I have a unique distinction to bring forth the word to encompass all manner of life, all manner of living. And I pray that you will continue to pray for me as I deliver the word of God. I'd like you to turn your Bibles to Matthew chapter 16. Verse 16 to 18. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. And the 16, verse 16 says, And, sorry, we start with verse 15. He saith, and Jesus saith unto him. Let me back up even to verse 13. When Jesus came into the coast, of Caesarea Philippi, which is a mountainous region. A region of churches, as it were, temples, rich, overseeing land, overseeing waters. On that perched place, mountainous region, we can see the constellation where you can see the waters, where you can see cities. Jesus made a declaration standing upon a mountainous region, standing upon a rock, standing upon a rock. Amen. So on that place is a real Philippi, a place of political order where they worship Caesar and they worship Philippi, a place of political institution and religious institution, the greatest powerhouses combined in that region. Jesus stood upon he asked his disciples question, whom do men say that I am? I the son of man am. And they said, some say thou art John the Baptist, some say Elijah, and others Jeremiah, and one of the prophets. He said unto them, but who ye say that I am? And Simon Peter answered and said, 
thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. And Jesus answered and said unto him, Blessed art thou, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood hath not revealed it unto thee, but my Father which is in heaven. And I say also unto thee, thou art Peter, and upon this rock will I build my church and the gates, somebody say gates, of hell. The gates of hell shall not prevail against them. And I will give unto thee the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatsoever thou shalt bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatsoever shall be loose on earth shall be loose in heaven. Let me go back. Upon this rock will I build my church. Still yet, upon this, okay, here we are, rock will I build. Come on, build. What am I doing? I'm building my church. Upon this rock, I'm building my church, and the gates of hell shall not. Are you getting here? Keep the answer with me. Go down. Upon this rock, here's a rock, right? I will build, come on, my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail. Why? Because there is some kind of a blocking. And as long as we're going upwards, there is a, call you with me, church, there is a block. Uh, if I could be so bold to put a title on today's message, it shall be entitled, Close the Gates. Oh, hallelujah. Close the gates. Upon this rock will I build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against them. Jesus Christ was there speaking to his disciples as a man, a man of God. And speaking to his disciples, he began to, to bring forth the question, who do men say that I am? It's very important, see, because what God was, God was doing through his son Jesus was establishing an identity. What am I saying, men? We need to know who we are. Hello. We need to know who we are. So he asked the question, who do men say that I am? And some said that he is Elijah. Some said that you're Jeremiah. You are one of the prophets. But then he went personal and said, who do you say that I am? Because it's not in who, what people think about us. It must be in who we really are. There should not be a speculation of our identity, but there should be a mastering of who we are. Are you hearing me? Because when you know who you are, you know what you stand for. When you know who you are, you know what you believe in. When you know who you are, no one can come along and tell you any, anything and you believe because you already mastered who you are. Oh, hallelujah. Say, I know who I am, man. I know who I am. They say that. I know who I am. I know who I am. And he said, he said, so in this, he said, who do men say that I am? Everybody has something to say about me, but who do you say I am? G um, Jesus' son in the spiritual realm, Peter looked at him and said, thou art the Christ. The son of the living God. You're more than a man. You're more than a prophet. You're more than a preacher. You are the Christ. The Christ means that you are the anointed one. You are the anointed one. The anointed one means you are the powerful one. You are the convicting one. You're the life changer and life giver. You are the superior over everything. You are the Christ. The past present and future. There is no doubt you are the Christ, the son of the living God. The son of the living God. There's got to be something greater living in our lives, saints, that lets us know that there is an abounding property that goes beyond ourselves. Man, what am I saying? We need to know God. To know who you really are is to know God. That's where your identity lies. When Jesus asked the question, he said, who do men say that I, the son of man am. I, the son of man am. Jesus never once no, did not lose himself. He never once lost place of who he is, what he stood for, and where he's going. Man, if you're going to be a man of God, you must know who you are, who you stand for, and where you are going. That's a man of God. Today's men are known by the depth 
depth of their voice, the broadness of their chest, the broadness of their shoulders, the broadness of their genitalia. That's not a manner that you need to follow. You need to follow, ladies, a man of God, a man that's broad in his prayer life, a man that's broad in revelation, a man that's broad to give, a man that's broad to forgive, a man that's broad to live. That's the man that you gotta be, man. Women, that's the man that you must align yourself with. Close the gates. No, there's something in you, but I'm to say a paraphrase that I can't see in anything else. When everything else is dying, decaying, and fading, you are the son of the living God. Oh, hallelujah. You are the son. You are the succeeding. What God says you do. Oh, God. What God says you testify of. You are the son of the living God. A succeeding generation. There's a generation in here that God is calling us for. And man, he's calling you first. He's calling you to lead. He's calling you to reign. He's calling you to make decisions. Oh, close the gate. Close the gate. Close the gate. In your home, man, there's many decisions, but you make the decision. In your home, man, there are many voices, but you are the voice. In the word of God, Jesus was standing upon a mountain, and he said, Peter, thou art your name is Peter. Peter means pebble. But the pebble had to make way to the rock. Oh, hallelujah. A pebble goes one way. A pebble sees flesh. But a rock sees spirit. Oh, Lord, I want to be, I don't want to be pebble-minded. I don't want a pebble mentality. A pebble you can kick. A pebble you can control. A pebble you can throw away. But I want to be a rock that cannot be moved. We got an anchor that keeps our soul stand fast and sure while the billows roll. Pass him. Drowning foot. Jesus. You can't change the rock, but the rock can change you. But the rock can beat you. You can't chip the rock, but the rock can chip you and shape you and fashion you and make you the way you're supposed to be. Give God praise. This is the basis. This is the real deal. This is the standard. This is the structure. Upon this rock, I will build. Oh, Lord, I love this. This is the unshakable foundation, the unpenetrable foundation, the immovable foundation, the unchangeable foundation. Upon this, the anointing. Building, 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 
you don't stop building. You keep moving. You keep on standing. You don't run out of parts. You don't run out of workmen. You don't run out of tools. You stay, keep on building. The devil wants to penetrate. He keeps penetrating, penetrating. But you keep on building. He wants to hold and blow. And blow everything you built up. But stay right there. Keep on building. Keep on moving. Keep on assembling. God will to put it together. You don't need a plan. He's the master plan. Hallelujah. Stay and do what you're supposed to do in the name of Jesus. Yeah. Upon this rock, I will build. You see, while you're building, you're also not just building, but you're blocking. You're building, but you're blocking. Come here, Jackson. You're building, but you're blocking. You're building, but you're blocking. You see, as we're building, as we're building and coming up forward, put your hands up like this. As you're building forward, Satan wants to come on this side. But before he keep on building, he can only come so far and not so far. Because you're building. The strong can move. The rock doesn't move. He can only come to every hand, but because you are building, he can only come so far. And oh, God Almighty, you got the power in the name of Jesus. You got the power in the name of the Lord. Don't say to Reagan, we the church will not be defeated. We got the power. Churches that said we're going up, upward, and onward. Give God praise. So the master expected me to build, and the master is expected me to block. Expected me to build. He expected me to block. Because when I'm building, I'm blocking. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, you know what the problem is today in the world? Is that people don't like builders. There's a lot of haters in the world. I hate preaching messages like this, but it's the truth. And it wasn't Jesus' day, it's in our day too. A lot of haters. They're not builders. But when we stop blocking, he start penetrating. See, the devil is a roping lion. He walking about. Oh, seeking. Stand up. Stand up, Mr. President. He will come in the middle here. He's walking about. Seeking who he may be devour. Oh, God. He's upon the gates. But he wants to do something in the gates. You see, you guys understand this. Hear me carefully. The gates was there as a defensive mechanism. Mm -hmm. Gates were there to protect the city. Gates were there to spoil attacks. I, I, I went back home, and the most beautiful homes are covered by some gates. And the grills, thank you. And the gates, same thing, same blocking. And so people, they want to they want to steal. But they can't come and touch the mango tree because the grill is there. Mm. Hallelujah. The grill is there. And even though they're so ambitious to try and get this, hear me out. I saw in Maypin when I was there watching. I saw the house and I saw the grill. And people may want to get into the house, but there's the grill there, the gate. Man, you're the gate. Oh, hallelujah. You're called to serve and to protect the house. Oh, Holy Ghost. You're called to serve and to protect the house. Nobody can come into my house and cut up food and get into my fridge and get into my body and get into my chicken wings without my authority because I run the house. Coming to the doors, taking possession.
position of my life, uh, take position of my kids, uh, when I'm eating off the belly uh, and watching off the chicken wings, uh, say that I have position over my children because I'm not praying, uh, I'm not fasting, uh, I'm not building, uh, I'm not going God, uh, when I'm marching around my house uh, and Satan can do anything he wants, uh, and I think I've got it made uh, when I know Satan has made his way in my house, but upon this rock, uh, I'm going to build my church. Oh, Lord, I start at the bottom and I'm coming up. I don't care where you go, man. Keep on coming up. Not only did I see in Macon the grill of the gates, but I saw the beautiful house, but I saw the watchdog. Hello. Hello. I ask you the question, where's your watchdog then? Oh, hallelujah. Where's your watchdog? Holy Ghost, if there's your watchdog, my God, my God, you need to wake up the dog within you. I'm not disrespecting the Holy Ghost, but it has eyes to see. It could sense things before it sees things. Man, open up your spiritual eye and start seeing what's going on in your life, what's going on in your home. What's going on in your neighbor? What's going on in the community? What's going on in the church? Open your eyes. Thank you. On the truck, I will build my church on the gates of hell. Shall not prevail. Against it. The gates of hell or the authority of hell shall not prevail against it. Hell must be hell, but the church must be the church. The politicians must be politicians, but leaders must be leaders. Society will be society, but men of God must be men of God. See all the hands of the married men in this place, all of you that are married. With all due respect, ladies, it's Glenn Sunday, so let me say as I want to say. <laughs> ladies will love me the same way. I gave you a floor now, so I know you're my friend. In the home. You ladies do as you want. You decorate how you would decorate. Let me see the hands of all you that will trust your husbands to decorate the house. There's a real woman right here. God bless you. Maybe there's hope for her. You're not going to have us pick the choice paint in the living room, family room, or kitchen. We're lucky if we get the outside shed to do. <laughs> Where you won't have us choose the furniture. Because you, you, we don't spend, you don't see a need to change the furniture. Because we had that car for 16 years and it served the purpose. <laughs> what do you mean bad color? It matches everything. <laughs> Inches mean something to you. I'm talking about furniture. <laughs> Reason being, because you want us to move it this much. And we're saying, what's wrong? Why you move it this much? If it's this much, it doesn't need to be moved. But you got the measurement, you know where you need to put what. And you know how much the work we need to be. Yes, women, I respect that. I can't change that. I, I wouldn't even bother trying because if he fails, what do you think I'm going to do with that? <laughs> and he's my father. But when it comes to the spiritual thermostat in the home, Close your eyes if you don't like what 
pregnancy. But if there's a tushy to be whooped, that tushy will be whooped. Don't tell me about this and tell me about that. There's no room in marriage in my home. You're going to talk whether you feel like you're not going to. There's going to be a house of peace. I tore the dial up and I tore it down and I tore everything off if you need me. But I'm a man and a man of God. You ladies may call the shots, but us men make sure the shots connect. A lot of times I only shoot blanks. Shoot off your mouth, nothing happens. AJ, 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 you study? There's something in there. It's the depth of power within the voice. We as men are expected to speak as God would speak, direct as God would direct, love as God would love, give as God would give. Call the shots. I love the testimonies I'm hearing. When Auntie Blossom, what she's giving, what she gave, give Auntie Blossom a hand. She gave God an in the mail. Let God arise in your man. Because when God is arise, you see, Peter got the revelation, and Peter moved upon the revelation. And I believe that Peter 2, chapter 2 or 3, he made mention about God building up a spiritual house. Are you hearing me? He got a spiritual house. The church is not the pulpit and the floors and the benches or the chairs. The church is the people. I've been to some extraordinary edifices. And it was cold because the people were cold. But I've been to some recreation centers where there's two or three. And it felt like on a cathedral because the presence of the Lord was there. And the warmth was there. You gotta go beyond what your eyes see. You gotta go beyond what your ears hear. You need to do things the way God intended and Calvary recommended. But we need to close the gate. Yes. Man, we have gateways. Holy Ghost. That can destroy us. The Bible says we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers. I won't, I won't, I won't. I won't Get into the Greek with, with principalities. But I'm going to stop with English. English, you can into that language. Principalities. You see, we're talking about a prince, a prince. Let's break it up, shall we? Prince and palities. Let's just break it up. Prince and palities. Prince and palities. Prince means reign or rulership. Prince George. Prince Charles. You hear me? The words are over that. That's, that's a prince. Now we're talking about palities, which is a region or territory. You're the municipalities. It's a region or a territory. Well, if I'm making mention about princes and territories, I'm talking about we're talking principalities. We're talking about spiritual dominion. Spiritual territory, spiritual domain. Can I give an example of that? Let's take that beautiful island of ours uh, called Jamaica. And we're talking about what principalities are ruling over there, what princes over territories, what spiritual territories is it under is is there under attack? Look how many daughters are being raped. Look how many people are getting murdered. Look how much kidnapping there is in Trinidad. Why is that happening? Because there's a domain of a demonic forces. 
Biased, but the Toronto the good. Not known in the 60s, North Toronto the good. Why is it known as something else right now? Because the gate was swung open. Man! We have an audio gate. Audio gate. We have an optical gate. We have an emotional gate with our, with our hearts. And we've been deceived, delayed, and distracted. Because we allow the gate of hell to be open. Our eyes, we see things that we're not supposed to see. We've heard things that we're not supposed to hear. Come on. And that which we've seen, and that which we've heard, has taken up root into the gate of our hearts. And it's one thing to get to the front door. It's another thing to get to the lobby door. But it's another thing to get in the escalator and go high up. So that if you're not built, you something else you are building and marriages are being destroyed because we're building something that God is not a part of and families are being destroyed because we're building on something that God is not a part of and communities are being destroyed because we are building on things that are not to be established but the gate of our eyes have been opened and the gate of our hearing has been opened and the gate to our heart has been opened the devil is a liar the devil's a manipulator the devil's a truth breaker but I don't allow the devil to be the gatekeeper but you need to get back to the solid the foundation, the rock of ages, that cleft for us. Close the gate. We read in the Old Testament of Samson, where all manner of supernatural strength and power. And when he was under the authority of God, he lifted the gates of the cities, carried it how many tens and upon tens, upon tens of miles, and threw it out. What well, that meant? The power of God was a superior power of authority. It was the ultimate authority. Come on. Come on. But because he left his audio gate open, Come on. Yes. for Delilah to hear. She began to speak. And not just to his ears, but speak to his spirit. One man that's been not being built up on God will hear things. Oh Lord, I was in, I was in Sunday school one time class in the 1990s with Deacon Highgate. With Brother Highgate, and he said, you can't stop birds from flying over your head, but you can stop them from building a nest in your head. Lord of my life, who's nesting in your heart? Who's nesting in your emotions? Who's nesting in your plans? Who do you have there nesting with the penetrating your soul? Samson, where does the strength lie? Where does the strength lie? Sammy, where does the strength lie? Son of boy, where does your strength lie? He didn't understand the seducing spirit. You need to understand the enemy. The enemy will send things that you want to hear. Man, the enemy will send things that you've been learning to hear in your head, in your heart. That's why you gotta keep building. You don't understand the enemy. The enemy is an angel of night. The enemy is 
slipped. The enemy knows what you like and will do everything to destroy you with what you like. Our friend whose marriage was destroyed because of pornography. A young couple refused to lay with his wife. You can't watch a movie with me. You can't sit down with me. It's okay, go to bed, I'm not tired. But while the wife was sleeping, waiting for him to come up for nine months, addicted to pornography, because he got his fix. He got his fullness, leaving his wife deprived. Because the optical gate did not hear. Come on. Come on. Come on. Men, listen up and wake up and stay up. Come on. The devil has no respect for your color, your marriage, your position. destroy you with all of that anymore. My son was a baby. I had to pick up something on Home Depot. I had him pushing the baby with a stroller, wearing my ring, and lying, struggling with the baby, struggling with the things that I have with a stroller. So I gotta respect you women for all that you do and keep on doing and make it look like it's with ease. Lady was in front of me. Take a conversation with me. Lady didn't want to help Got a conversation with her. She's talking to me. I answer her back. So, yeah, I'm working on things in my house. Stuff right there. She said, well, I just came to pick this up. Because my bedroom has no blinds. So I don't know if you want to come on and see me. Because my bedroom has no blinds. She had shit too. And I was blind to the blinds. I was blind to the shape. Sister Sanders not here, right? Yes. Guard her all the okay, mother. I told her, hold it with a stroller. So I'm a married man. My baby's here, my ring is here, and my heart is outside here. But the seducing spirit doesn't care about a ring. Come on, Those are young ting. Come on, those have to be in school, co-op student. Nice. After me, I said, I'm married. I don't want you. I'm happily married. And even if I was miserably married, I still wouldn't want her. But guess what? The seducing spirits saw a picture of the wife. And guess what? She wanted me and her. Are you hearing what I'm saying to you? Because the seducing spirit will get anything and everything. But you need to corner the bad spirit before the bad spirit corners you. Man, you're, not, you're, not, you're not ready for this bald head gap to preach up. the root of the 
matter. You know what she told me? She told me she got this way because she got with a married man who invited her to church. This is what saves you, not me. I was at a convention. Over 800 or so strong. A thousand people. And I happened to play the guitar. And it worked out well. My fingers were flying, not like right now. Those were good times. So I'm leaving that celebration to go to a convention. What am I doing? I'm leaving the celebration to go to? Come on, but do you know the devil wants to get you in every way that he can? And I'm on the way up to the exit. And I see this young man. Sister Sandra's still not here, right? Beautiful woman. My rose pen lips. Hazel green eyes. A curly hair down to the crevice of her back home. And I have all that in my guitar. And the exit is right here. But I just her eye. The eye. Give me the, the eye. The eye. Lord of my life. All of a sudden, the rhythm gone. But when we have done, righteousness must remain. And foot, if you are ready, be gone. conversation matters and your wife can be in a disagreement for many years over certain things. A nice young thing will come along, speak to you in a casual conversation that has nothing to do with what you guys are arguing about and connect the same voice of reason. But although it's the same thing said, doesn't mean it's the same thing to be rendered. You gotta do what you're supposed to do. And I'm gonna preach right here. I'm not gonna move. I'm gonna stand on the rock. Which cannot move. I'm gonna call it two socks, anyways. You need to stick with that which you got and know what you got. Because you can get what you want and lose what you have. Yes. What are you building on? What are you building on? What are you maintaining? What are you refraining from? The devil's not afraid of your masculinity. 
Amen. But the devil will challenge the masculine man. Yes. He's not afraid of your marriage. He'll do everything he can to destroy your marriage. Son. And I said, You're my gatekeeper. Close the gates. Who are you? Who opened your gates? Who opened your gates? <laughs> and then they will fit your ticket. Are you a gangster? Men, stand to their feet. The comforting men. Men of substance.